everyone, it's Lindsay and welcome back to my channel. Today I am doing the second installment in the series that I'm calling Books I've Been Loving Recently. I have eight books to talk about in the second quarter, which is absolutely amazing because if you guys know me at all, you know that I'm a very picky biatch <laughs> when it comes to giving out four and five stars with the books that I read. I am just so fastidious nowadays, especially after reading all those craft books. It's just all I can think about when I'm reading books. So if you haven't seen the first video, I will link that down below and up in the cards so you can check that out. Uh, but these, this series basically encompasses all of the books that I have liked or loved this year that I get to share with you guys. So I have eight books to talk about, so we are just going to dive right in. I actually think I'm going to start out with two books. Uh, because they are both so similar and I read them within like 24 hours of each other and that is both A Perfect Murders and The Other People. A Perfect Murders follows this man who works at a bookshop and runs a very uh, famous blog. In the blog he wrote an article that basically went through a collection of all of the mystery books throughout time and he picked the eight perfect murders he thinks would have been unsolvable if they were done in real life. Of course it all hits the fan when someone steals that list and actually starts starts murdering people in the exact order of the books that he lists and so the police come to him and they're like dude are you murdering people and he's like no I'm not murdering people but I'm also the protagonist in a thriller and of course have to insert myself in the drama and in the mystery to try to solve it. It was really fun it dealt with a lot of dark web stuff which is like my perfect cup of tea I'm so intrigued by the dark web because it is so mysterious and it was a fun and enjoyable ride. The same can be said for the other people which follows a man who on the way home from work one day sees his five-year-old daughter in the back seat of the car in front of him and she's like help I'm being kidnapped so he chases the car down the car gets away he's freaking out so he pulls off to the side of the road and tries to call his wife. Someone answers his wife's phone and he finds out it is the police and the police are like hey yo I'm at your house your wife and your daughter are murdered and their bodies are right in front of me and he's like no no that can't be true I just pulled off the road because I saw my daughter being kidnapped and the police are like we've correctly identified the bodies we've had your whoever in your family come identify the bodies like they're dead so we follow him I think over the next 10 years as he like travels up and down that road always thinking that he might be able to actually find his daughter because he doesn't think that his daughter is actually dead and at the same time we follow this woman on the run we don't really know why but she's on the run with her child and all that we know that connects the two people POVs is this mysterious dark web affiliation called the other people and they're basically an organization that if someone you love or yourself has been harmed by another person in some way uh, whether that be like rape murder home invasion whatever it can be as petty as you want or as serious and you do not feel that the justice system offered apt consequences you can hire the other people to do whatever you would like to that person that harmed you or your loved one. So it all kind of twists and turns and comes together as you find out how they're all related and affiliated with the other people and like both victims and perpetrators and it was just a really really fun thriller to like watch all come together. I'm talking about them both at the same time because I just found them really similar in the way that they both deal with family and fatherhood and the other people and the dark web and things like that. Uh, there were things that I guessed, things that I didn't guess about both of them, but either way they were just such a fun ride. I find thrillers to be like cotton candy and it's just like you eat them and they're addicting and then they're gone. <laughs> so uh, I, I found these just like really similar and reading them back to back they were just like my perfect brand of cotton candy. Okay so this next book is actually I think my favorite of the whole quarter and it is The Chain. Now if this isn't already bought as a movie like it totally should be because it's not only like a mystery thriller it is like action-packed and it would just be like the perfect like Netflix original movie. Oh my gosh, I want it to be so bad. <laughs> the theme of the thrillers that I read this quarter are like dark web drama, I guess, uh, because this book follows this dark organization called The Chain, where you basically get a call as a parent and it's another parent calling you saying, hey, I've kidnapped your child. If you want your kid back, you have to kidnap someone else's child. It's also like really intense because if you don't kidnap someone else's child to get your child back, like your child could be murdered and if you go to the police and the chain finds out like there will be like a whole chain of murders like 
the person who kidnapped your child not only will they kill your child but the person who kidnapped their child will kill their child so it's just like a whole chain of events you can't go to the police you can't mess up you can't break the chain so we follow our main character Rachel who I loved Rachel she's probably one of my favorite main characters that I have read this entire year. She is just your regular, everyday, av average woman who is forced to do something awful. And that's like one of my favorite tropes is when you just take a genuinely good person and put them in a situation where they have to do awful things and then like watch them morally struggle with all of them. Mm, it's so wonderful. <laughs> this isn't a spoiler because it's like talked about in the very first chapter, but our main character Rachel is a mom who is uh, recently divorced she's dealing with that and then she's also she just had her cancer return so she's literally like dying of cancer while she's trying to like figure out where to get the extortion money that she has to give to the chain uh how and when and like all of the logistics of kidnapping someone else's kid to get her kid back at the same time she enlists the help of her ex-brother-in-law who is ex-military and he is a heroin addict because the va like wasn't helping him with his pain and getting his medication so he's a heroin addict so we have these two like extremely realistic and flawed and like disabled characters like one's literally dying of cancer and the other is like having heroin withdrawals and they are doing all that they can to get their niece slash daughter back and it is just so enthralling to watch them struggle and like do whatever they have to no matter how nasty and gritty and like dirty like morally they have to get to get their niece slash daughter back oh my gosh it was so good <laughs> we also get the perspective of the girl who was kidnapped the 14 year old daughter uh and i loved her i love that the writer did not make her like the child like puny victim um the one to like pity and feel bad for and rescue like no she had autonomy she was a fully fleshed character and she was trying her darndest to like escape and like sabotage and like oh, i just loved all of the characters i loved all of the stakes i do want to say though if you got high anxiety or any type of like thing where you can't handle high emotions high stakes like this is not the book for you at this time and at this place I think from chapter one or maybe it was chapter two like my blood pressure was through the roof and I don't think it ever went down until I finished the book it is that intense it's that enthralling it's that much of a page turner and I absolutely love it like if this does not end up on my top 10 favorites of the year I would be shocked next I'm going to talk about the two adult fantasies that I read the first being a laundress now I gave this one like a four 4.25 stars. It's Brandon Sanderson's debut novel and it definitely is like a quintessential Brandon Sanderson novel where it's long and heavy and the world building is like so intense and uh just just very well developed like you feel like you really understand the magic of this world. This to me just felt so like comforting and familiar it's like kind of like watching lord of the rings <laughs> if you grew up on lord of the rings where it's just got that like homey nostalgic fantasy feel of like all the fantasy that i grew up and like that really got me into the genre basically follows one of the perspectives is a prince who is like one of these like gods that used to have power and then something happened and the power started to like kind of like desiccate the god's bodies to where like if you get like a scratch or a bruise or like even a broken bone they never heal and all of your injuries just like accumulate over the years and and um you never stopped feeling the pain so you could literally like go insane uh if you get too bad of an injury so you always kind of have to be careful and then we follow the princess that was sent to marry him now i absolutely loved her perspective she is one of my favorite women i think brandon sanderson has ever written um she reminds me of cersei lannister if cersei wasn't like so evil uh, she just really is good at politics and doesn't let the men boss her around and is still allowed to be feminine um and those feminine things aren't seen as weaknesses. I don't really have much else to say about this. It was just like a fun, comforting fantasy read. There was drama. There's like, you know, a religious zealot trying to kill off all of the gods and you know, it's all this stuff. It's fun. It's a fun ride. It was a romp. <laughs> I finally read Circe by Madeline Miller. Everyone has been talking about this book, I feel like for, for like years <laughs> and I finally got around to reading it and I really feel like this is a great book to listen to. It has a very legend 
type feel or vibe to it where I think like an oration or uh, yeah just the audiobook is the way to go for this. It basically just follows the Greek god goddess Circe's life um, from the time she's a child all the way up until the end and it was it was it was a nice pleasurable read. I gave it four stars because I just enjoyed myself like I it was comforting in the way that it felt like someone was just reading me a bedtime story about like magic and creatures and goddesses and uh things like that so I yeah I enjoyed this and I recommend it the next book I'm going to talk about is Journey's End by Rachel Hawkins this was a super cute middle grade about a little southern girl whose parents have divorced and she is going to go stay with her dad for the summer as he works on this little island called Journey's Inn and in, in Scotland and uh, he's there studying and trying to understand this mysterious fog that kind of hangs off the side of the village. Uh, and so she goes to live with him for the summer. And then at the same time, we follow the perspective of a little girl whose family kind of makes their money on the lore and legends of the fog. You know, there's this idea that like people have disappeared in the, th in the fog. And if you go into the fog, you never come out. And so her family kind of runs like a tourist uh, boat ride up to the fog where you can take pictures and then they have like a little gift shop and all this stuff. So the two girls become unlikely friends as their parents are kind of pitted against each other. And then the story really kicks off when a boy who was said to have disappeared into the fog over 200 years ago reappears on the island. I listened to a podcast with Rachel Hawkins and she was talking about how she wrote this book while she was in Scotland. So she really does get the atmosphere down and that's one of the things that I loved about this book was I just I felt like I was there. You could feel like the cold mist on your skin and um, just like smell like greenery and moss and, and like sea salt and all that stuff. It was just, it was so great and atmospheric. I loved the characters. Um, the one little girl is just like trying to deal with the fact that her parents are splitting up and the other little girl is dealing with her family potentially losing their business along with the fact that she just had her first friendship breakup. So it was just like a fun, good story with cute characters and like cute character arcs and I really enjoyed it. Next book was actually a nonfiction. I read another Caitlin Doherty book and this one was Will My Cat Eat My Eyeballs? <laughs> I think in my last favorites book, I talked about her uh, Smoke It's In Your Eyes book, which is a more serious look uh, sociologically at how Western society really gets death wrong. And it's kind of like autobiographical at the same time. And that was a really amazing, impactful read. But that one was a bit more serious, whereas this one is lighthearted, where uh, has, as Caitlin has toured the country for the book stops for her other books, she's had like young children come up to her and ask her like really zany questions about death and so she lists all those questions in this book and then gives you like scientific mortuary answers for each and it was such a fun funny read like I swear some of these kids are gonna grow up and be serial killers I loved it I think that my favorite question that one of the kids asked her was if I eat a bowl of popcorn kernels before I die and then get cremated what happens to my body and I was like what a good question. <laughs> it was just a really fun time. If you can handle like morbid humor and need a good laugh, I highly recommend this and I gave it four stars. The last book I have to talk about today is The Test by Sylvain Nouvel. This is the only other five star that made it on the list. Everything else, if I didn't say the ratings, they were four stars. This one's heavy guys. This one is a hard one to recommend. Uh, this is actually a novella and it follows an Iranian immigrant as he is trying to take the immigration test to get into England. Now this is sci-fi so it takes place in kind of like a near future type setting uh, where the immigration test is a little bit more sci-fi <laughs> than it is now uh, and I think that's really all you need to know. The thing about this type of book is it is supposed to be shocking like that is the the point I think of the novel so the least you know about it the the better the impact will be. I don't know if I've ever read a book that ever made me feel so much dread and like helplessness as I was reading so because of that I definitely don't think this is an easy one to recommend. I think that if you are not in a good mental state right now or dealing with high anxiety uh, this definitely is one you should pass over <laughs> because it is intense. Now when I said like the chain was intense that was like fun like I can't wait to turn the page and see what happens next. This is like I don't want to turn the page because I don't want to know what happens next. All that being said I think it's like an amazing look at uh 
immigration and policies and things like that in the UK and really I mean it reflects into America as well uh, and even though it is sci-fi and it is near future it's not like a look of hope or um, you know some there is like a light at the end of the tunnel it's not a book like that whatsoever it's very much so a mirror image and like this is how it is it's awful it's bleak and this is the truth. I also want to point out that uh, this is not a known voices novel. Uh, the author, as far as I know, is not an Iranian immigrant. So if I can find some own voices reviews of this book, I will link them down below. Uh, if not, just just bear that in mind as you read. All right, so those are the eight books that I loved and read this quarter. I think it was a pretty good quarter. I think I had a few more books uh, last quarter that I liked, but we're already into the third quarter of the year and I already have like all of the books that I've read so far this quarter are going to be on next, next, uh, the next books I've been loving recently video. So I'm really excited for that. As always, let me know down in the comments if you have read any good books recently. I am always looking for recommendations. And if you've read any of these books yourself, make sure to let me know what you think. Thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. It really helps out my channel. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!